Hi! In this video, I want to show you how you can structure your code better in Python. This is particularly important when your project grows in size and you add more and more functions and classes to your projects. In particular, we will introduce two new concepts, modules and packages. So, what is a Python module? In Python, a module is simply a file consisting of Python code. In a module, you can, for instance, define functions, classes, or variables. In addition to such definitions, a module can also include runnable code. Any runnable code will be automatically executed whenever you use the module. As always, it is important to know when a new concept is useful. Modules are particularly good if you want to organize your program logically. The most common use cases for modules is if you have a program that goes too much in size and you want to split the code into several smaller files for easier maintenance. You achieve that by moving that code into several modules. Another use case is that you want to structure your code such that functionality that belongs together are grouped into one module. So for instance, you might have a module for utility functions in your program. You might have another module that handles the user interface and a third module that handles the business logic. A third application of modules is to place code in a module that is used by multiple scripts. Each script can then access the code in that module, which essentially allows you, allows you to avoid code duplication. Finally, modules are a great way to make your code available to other people. You can simply create a module that contains your code and share it, for instance, on the web. Now let's talk about how to use modules. In fact, it is quite likely that you already used some of the standard modules that Python comes with. One of these standard modules is the sys module. After importing the module, any functions, variables, or classes defined in that module can be accessed by writing the module name followed by a dot followed by the function class or variable name. In this example, we access the argv array in the sys module to access the command line parameters that was passed to the script. This next example shows an, an alternative way of importing objects from a module. This syntax is particularly useful if you only want to access one specific or a few specific members from that module. Here we only import the argv variable and nothing else from the sys module. The advantage is that in the following code, we do not need to use the sys namespace to access the argv variables. Of course, you have to be careful that the name that you're importing is not already used to avoid name clashes. There is one more syntax for importing variables from a module. It is the from module name import star syntax. With this line, you import all variables, classes, and functions defined in the sys module into your current namespace. So in particular, we also import the argv array that stores the command line arguments. However, you have to be very careful with the star import because you might be importing variables that you're not aware of. In this example, we intend to create a new variable called flex that is the empty string. However, the sys module also contains a variable flex. And if we are not careful, we might be changing the sys.flex value without us realizing it, causing unexpected side effects. For that reason, it is generally not recommended to use the import star notation. Now, next, let's talk how to create a Python module. In Python, this is very simple. All you need to do is to create a new Python file and add any variables, functions, and classes that you want to be part of that module. And that is it. So our first module could be as simple as this. We create a new file called mymodule.py and we create one variable called name and add another function called create that prints out a welcome message. Once you save that Python file, you can use that module just like any other modules that we've seen before. Here we use the import statement to get the mymodule and then call the create function. Let's see if it works. Yes. Alternatively, we can import the module and at the same time give it a new name. Here we use the import my module smm syntax. This renaming is often useful if your module has a long name and you want to avoid writing out that long name over and over again in your code. And finally, we, we can use the specific import to only import, for instance, the name variable from our module. Now you might ask yourself, how did Python find this module? Now you might ask yourself, how did Python find this module? When importing a module and also packages, as we will discuss later, Python searches for that module using three different strategies in the following order. First, it will check if a module of that name exists in your current working directory. In our example, we place the module mymodule in the current working directory. And that is the answer while Python 
found our module. If Python does not succeed to find your module in the current working directory, it then searches through a list of user specified paths. This list of paths is stored in the environment variable Python path. If that module is also not found in these paths, then finally Python will try to find the module in some global standard paths. The exact, part, the exact paths where Python looks for depends on your operating system and the Python installation. I want to show you one more trick when developing modules. Normally, modules are not intended to be executed like a script, but often it is useful to have some demo or test code as part of the module that can be executed for testing purposes while developing the module. If you add this if statement to your module, then any code that is contained in the if statement is only executed when the module is used as a script. In particular, the build function will not be executed if the module is imported from another script. I often use this if statement to add examples, demos or test code at the end of my modules. The next topic of this video are packages. Packages in Python are the highest level structures for organizing your code. Just like modules can contain many classes and functions, packages can contain many modules. A package makes distributing and installing these modules easy in Python. So what exactly is a package? A package is a hierarchical file directory structure that can contain modules, but also sub packages or even sub sub packages. In the example here, you see a typical package usage. We have an import statement where the first part of the import statement refers to the package name, in this case SciPy. In that package, we access the optimize module. From that module, we import the minimize functions. Packages allow us to organize modules and scripts into a single environment. These can then be easily distributed and imported by name. One of the key strengths of Python is the set of powerful packages that are available. Relevant packages are, for instance, the SciPy package, which contains scientific Python, NumPy for numerical Python, IPython for interactive Python, Matplotlib for plotting, Pandas for data analysis, and Scikit-learn for machine learning. Many of these packages you will get to know during this course. In order to easily search and find which packages are available in Python, the community has developed the Python package index, which essentially is a large database of Python packages that can be downloaded and installed. The database can be accessed through the command pip. The most common pip commands are pip search for searching Python packages that contain a specific keyword and pip install to install a specific Python package on your computer. Creating a package in Python is almost as simple as creating a module. If you have one or multiple module, you can collect them into a package. A package is organized such that you place all the modules into a directory. Each directory or subdirectory must have a underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py file. Through the existence of this file, Python knows that that directory is a package. Here's an example directory tree of a Python package. The application here is a solver for partial differential equations. The root package is called PDE solver. In order to make it a package, I created an init File. This file can be empty, but the existence is important to tell Python that this directory is a Python package. In this Python package, we have another sub package called numerics. In turn, the numeric sub package con contains another sub package called PDE. And finally, in this sub package, we have one module called grids.py, which contains in particular one function FDM grids. Once we created this package structure, we can import the modules from the package. The syntax of the import statement follows the structure of the directory. So here we have PDE solver dot numerics dot PDE, which are the subfolders in the directory structure above. And then we have grids, which is our module name. In that module name, we access the FDM grids function. Again, we should ask ourselves how Python finds our packages when we import them. In general, when importing a package, Python uses exactly the same strategy as when trying when importing a module. So it first looks in the current working directory, then it checks in the environment variable Python path, and then it checks some global paths. Up to now, we always assumed that we have the modules or package in our current working directory. I now want to say a few words about options two and three. If we develop a package, and want to make it available independent of our current working directory, then one option is 
to add the package path to the Python path variable. Let's take the example where we store our PD package in home Simon PD solver. We can now add this path to the search path list with the following export command. After this export command, the PDE solver package will be available anywhere. Note that the search path will be lost when you open a new bash session. If you want to make this variable permanent, then you need to add the export statement to your bash RC file. The second option to make a package available everywhere is to create a setup.py file. The setup.py file describes how the package should be installed. In addition, store some metadata about the package, like the name and the version. Once a setup.py file has been created, we can use standard Python tools to install our package and make it available globally, including the pip command that I showed you before for installing packages. A simple example of a setup.py file is shown here and has to be placed in the root directory of your package. The most important argument is the packages argument, which should contain the name of the package that you would like to install. Optionally, you can add the scripts argument if you also want to install some executable scripts. Once, once you created the setup.py file, you can then install the package and the scripts with a pip command by executing pip3 install and then the path to the setup.py file. You can use a dot if this is your current directory. Then again, you can use the user flag for a single user installation or a no flag if you want to have a system-wide installation. You can uninstall the package by calling pip with the uninstall argument and the name of the package. At this point, I can show you the complete structure of our Python project. In our root directory, we have the setup.py file and a directory containing the actual Python packages and modules. Here are our PDE solvers, the numeric sub package, the PDE sub package, and finally the quiz module. In addition, I have an executable script called solver.py that I want to have installed also through the setup.py file. 